Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So the day has finally arrived. The new Ryzen 3000 Zen 2 chips and the AMD Navi GPUs are now officially out, reviewed, we got numbers and tons and tons of stuff to talk about here today. All right, so in this video, we're just gonna be talking about the new Ryzen 3000 stuff. Navi is seemingly a more complicated situation, so I'm doing a lot more in-depth um, searching on that, so that'll be coming out a little bit later on here today, maybe tomorrow, depending on how in-depth I have to get with that. But alrighty guys, so with the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, Intel is now stupid. Uh, we all knew this was gonna happen, but now it's official. We have all the numbers. Buying an Intel CPU right now is just dumb. It seems most of the reviewers out there got their hands on a 3700X and the 3900X, which is the 12 core CPU. Now, Gamers Nexus was able to get their hands on a 3600 non-X uh, CPU. They were like the only ones that have one. Now that CPU is actually the one that I'm personally most interested in for most gamers because it's a $200 CPU and it was expected to perform about on par with an 8700 non-K, at least stock for stock. So those CPUs, according to Gamers Nexus, are pretty much neck and neck, which is amazing. That is a fantastic deal. That was a $400 CPU like a year and a half ago. You can now get those for $199. So that's really excellent. Now gaming performance seems to differ depending on which reviewer you're checking out and what games they benchmark and everybody reviews things differently. So there's a ton of different numbers out there. It's the reason why my Navi video is gonna take a little bit longer. But Steve from Hardware Unboxed, he actually found that the gaming performance on the new Ryzen 3000 seemed to be a little bit lacking in his numbers. So I did this little chart here and I basically compiled all of his gaming benchmarks. And as we can see, the 3700X compared to the 2700X, which is its direct replacement, they're the exact same price, is only coming in at seven and 8% respectively, higher than the previous generation. Now compared to productivity workloads that are coming in at the advertised 15% higher, uh, this, this seems a little strange. This is basically half the performance gain that we were expecting from the Ryzen 3000. So that seems a little bit off to me. And like I said, Gamers Nexus, you can see the 8700K, like on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, GTA 5, they're pretty much neck and neck. I mean, the 8700K is coming in a little bit ahead, but not by much. We're also talking about a $400 CPU compared to a $200 CPU here. So it's okay that it's like a little bit faster. That's, that's not gonna hurt anybody's feelings. So it looks like there might be something else going on out there. Now in Linus's video, he actually theorized that there might be something going on with the Windows scheduler. He found something a little awkward or odd in there. He didn't go into too much detail, but that definitely seems like something that warrants further investigation. As we know from the prior Ryzen launches, Windows typically takes a little while to catch up to be able to utilize the new CPUs because the new Zen 2 architecture, it's different. I mean, it might be similar to Zen 1, but it is a whole new architecture. It's its own new thing. So to me, this whole launch feels a lot more like the first generation launch where everything's not completely ironed out yet, but the performance is so good that it still looks fantastic. But I actually think that there's a lot more performance there inside of that CPU that's not being utilized by current software or Windows or something. So, so there might be some updates in the future that will actually get these CPUs running even faster than they are here today, which is really crazy to think about, at least in things like gaming. Because right now we're getting about half of the increase that we were expecting from AMD in the gaming tests, according to Steve from Hardware Unbox. So I, I think that there's more there. We'll have to wait and see. So there's definitely a lot more investigating that needs to be done on these. But at this point in time, it's looking awesome and everybody pretty much agrees on that. And pretty much buying an Intel CPU right now makes no sense unless you're running a 2080 Ti at a low resolution because you want to. There's really no other reason to do it. And in the future, the new Ryzen CPUs may eventually catch up. Hard to say, impossible to know at this point. Now it's time for the real question. Should you upgrade to a Ryzen 3000 CPU? That, that's the real burning question that everybody's asking themselves. So, all right, I was already talking with my patrons and in my Discord about this with all those guys. And for me, compared to the Ryzen 2000 series, it doesn't seem like that big of an upgrade. So right now, if you have a 2000 series CPU and you don't do a lot of productivity, 
I'd probably wait it out. However, if you do have a Ryzen 1000 series or older, so Bulldozer or any of that stuff, and then if you have like a Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, and probably even like a Haswell CPU or any four core, you know, even a four core eight thread CPU, it would definitely be worth the upgrade. Now, if you have yourself like an HEDT Broadwell CPU, that's probably still just fine, or a Haswell CPU, that's probably still gonna be okay. But if you want absolutely the best CPU that you can get here today for a reasonable price, it's hands down the Ryzen 3000 series. And like I said, pretty much Gen 1, uh, Steve from Gamers Nexus, he was seeing Ryzen 1000 series to 3000 series gains in gaming up to about 34%. So that's massive. That's absolutely huge. So there's a lot of room there for improvement from the first gen to this generation. Second gen, like I said, seems to be a little bit up in the air. I'd probably hold off a little bit and wait and see where things land. And then the older Intel CPUs, first off, you get rid of security flaws. So, hey, <laughs> that's almost worth it in and of itself. Secondly, pricing on these are really good. I mean, you can get a 3600, which performs similarly to an 8700, an i7 8700 for $199. Get yourself a cheap B450 motherboard, something like an $80 board, and then boom, there you go. You got a platform for less than 300 bucks if you already have RAM, or less than 350 if you need to buy RAM. RAM's pretty cheap right now, so that's actually really, really solid, considering that's about how much the i7-8700 cost just a couple of years ago. So yeah, it's really great to see that these CPUs are out there. I still think that there's more room for improvement. The community is gonna need to do a little bit of investigating to see what's going on, what the issues are. Um, a lot of reviewers were talking about having some BIOS issues and, you know, it's a new architecture, it's a new launch, and let's be frank, it's AMD. There's always glitches of some sort. So once all of that gets ironed out, we'll know for sure. So if you're kind of on the fence, might be worth waiting a couple of months, see where things are. If you're like, eh, I'm not sure if I need this, definitely wait a few months, see where things are at. But if you're like, man, I really need something to, you know, start my own YouTube channel. I've had a few people mention that or any sort of productivity, definitely buy one of these. There's really no reason not to uh, if you're running something a little bit older. Now, if you're sitting there with like, uh, you know, a 2700X, I probably wouldn't do it. I mean, that's still a great CPU. And with 2700s and 2700Xs basically hitting that $200 price point, that might actually be the way to go if you're doing something that's really heavily threaded because the six core 12 thread CPU will not beat a 2700X um, in productivity workloads. So that's something to keep in mind as well because those prices are gonna come down, get real cheap, and that might be a better option. So yeah, right now is a really good time to buy if you need something. If you don't need something, I would wait for the bugs to get ironed out on the 3000 series. That's probably my best stance on this is if you can wait, just give it a couple of months, then we'll know for sure. And if you can't wait, well, I would do it because they're not that expensive. Unless you're looking at like, a, you know, the 3900X. But if you're looking at that, you probably know it's going to do what you're going to want it to anyway. Well, alrighty, guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Are you going to be getting one of these guys? Um, I don't know if Amazon's got the links yet, but if I can get them, I'll put links in the description below if you guys want to check those out. Also helps out the channel. But I'm really curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this. I think everybody out there is pretty excited that Intel really needs to step up to the plate now. And that's great. That means their next processor will hopefully hit a home run. It might take them a while to get there. They're definitely not coming out anytime soon. But at the very least, the bar has been set to a really high point where Intel has to compete. And hopefully AMD keeps innovating and keeps bringing you know, the heat. So this way, by the time Intel does come out, we have nice competition. And then that means lower prices, better performance for all of us. So that'd be really awesome. But once again, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you like the video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really does help me out. If you want to help support the channel even further, you can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. We can talk about this stuff on Discord before I make the videos. And that's really all I have for now. And I will catch you guys in the next video.